in the second part of this problem, we have to calculate what is the speed of the box, the object, after well, at the point where it comes back. So it goes up some height and then comes back down. So there's something uh, important that is going to change. So now, so the friction was in the negative direction because the velocity was in the positive direction. Friction always opposes velocity. And now the velocity is going to be to the left in the negative direction because it's going to be coming back down. That means that friction is going to be in this direction. And that's a significant change. So initially, the friction and the pull of gravity acted um, in the same direction. They were friends. Now they are opposing. Gravity wants to bring the object down, and friction wants to keep it where it is. So that means that in this equation, our equations are going to change. Um, we have friction. Now it's in the positive direction. We to have the the equation in y is the same. So the normal is still mg cosine theta. So we can put it in here for um, mu, k, mu k times the normal. But and now this one is in the positive direction. And the gravity, mg sine theta, is still in the negative direction. OK, so that means that the acceleration is going to be um, so we can make this one positive and put the negative in here, right? Right, this is still going to be in most cases, still negative. So it's going to slide down. OK. So this is the acceleration in x. Um, we know that the height was 3.8 meters in one case. Uh, so I'm going to do that case first, in which we had friction. So uh, if h is 3.8 meters, that means that uh, delta x is going to be 3.8 meters divided by sine theta. Sine theta is sine uh, theta is 30, so sine 30 is one half. And so this is going to be 7.6 meters. So that's the, the displacement in the horizontal direction. So let's call it delta x. Well, it is delta x, 7.6 meters. So we know the acceleration, and we know the, the displacement. So velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus 2ax. We know that the initial velocity is 0. So again, we have two segments in this problem. In segment 1, 
the object is moving up and then it reaches a point where the velocity is exactly zero and then starts sliding back down. So it's it's turning point over here. And in section two, um, the velocity is in the negative direction. So that means that the initial velocity of section two is the final velocity of section one, which is equal to zero. So we can get rid of this one. And we want to know the velocity. So we can just take square root of these. I'll do one half. 2a delta x, one half on both sides. So this one becomes just one velocity equals that. And So two times this g mu k cosine, you can put the cosine 30 in there, minus sine 30. Uh, delta x is a 7.6 meters. And this whole thing is to the one half. Okay, so mu k is 0.2, cosine 30 is 0.866. So the total is gonna be uh, 0.173. I guess it's the same quantity that we have before. And that is unitless. It's just unitless and unitless. And sine 30 is, is minus one half. Uh, 0.5. Actually, I'm gonna keep this one squared. Okay. So then we have yeah. So this whole thing is negative point thirty two six. Negative point thirty two six and then times nineteen point six. That's negative six point four. Um meters per second squared, because we have the G. And I actually missed something over here. The displacement is negative because it is in the negative direction. So it goes from um, 7.6 to zero. So displacement is zero minus 7.6. So the displacement is negative. Okay, so now this works. So we have the negative here and this negative and they go away. And now we have meters squared per second squared. And this one is 48, 48.7. meters squared per second squared. And now we can take the square root of these, right, to get the velocity. So, so 
So that is uh, six point ninety seven. So you know this is pretty close to seven meters per second. And this is the first answer. So in the second case, um, we could do it and you know it will be exactly the same except that the mu k is zero. But we can also notice that if there is no friction, then this is just you know, going up and then going down. And so the velocity is gonna be the same, but in the negative, in the opposite direction uh, than when it started. So if the initial velocity is 10 meters, then the final velocity is also going to be 10 meters. But you could do it also if you want it. All right, thank you.